Lilium Pumpernickel. He is one of the most memed rappers in the game today and someone that not a lot of people take that seriously. But there have been a couple of events recently that have made me ask myself one question more and more. And that question is, is Lil Pump unhappy? And if so, why is that? There's some new information that has came out recently that could help explain this. So first we're going to look at the evidence that Lil Pump hasn't been feeling all that great. And then we're going to look at the reasoning for this with this new information that came out in an article a few days ago. So with that being said, this is CDTV Productions here with my man's Blackie Speaks who's going to be helping me out with this video. The link to his channel will be in the description below. If you like my videos, you'll love his ones. And with all that being said, let's talk about this situation. Yes, you drive me First, let me just show you a little bit of evidence that Lil Pump hasn't been feeling that great. There's nothing super concrete except maybe him straight up tweeting I'm depressed in August 2017. And maybe he's feeling better now than he did back then, but there's still a lot of stuff that is worth looking at and worth noting. The most recent example I can think of was on October 18th this year, when he posted an ironic meme about depression and suicidal thoughts with the caption mood and those, those pesky little laughing cry emojis. Aren't they just a, a perfect way to, to mask what you're feeling? But yeah, this definitely looks like someone using jokes to kind of cover up their true feelings whilst simultaneously letting people know that they're not actually okay. As you can see, quite a few comments actually mentioned this as well. Additionally, the name of his clothing line is Unhappy. Maybe a bit of a stretch, it could just be playing into the idea of this emo rap wave, but this could be him further suggesting that he really isn't satisfied with his life at the moment. On top of this, Back in July 2018, Lil Pump posted an Instagram story saying this I'm going through some stuff. I'm on probation. I can't do anything. I'm at the worst point in my life right now. I don't want to be here no more. The real sad thing about that one is a lot of people didn't take it seriously because of Lil Pump's image and persona, but someone saying that they don't want to be alive anymore isn't something that should be taken lightly. Other than that tweet, this is the closest thing Pump has ever done to outright saying that he's not happy. But why does he feel this way? Well, obviously, if he is feeling unhappy, there's most likely numerous reasons for that, and it's impossible to boil it down to just one thing. But I think it's fairly easy to assume what one big factor in this could be with an article that has came out recently and revealed a little bit of new information here. <laughs> What? 100 on risk. Like I said, there could be numerous things that are causing Lil Pump to feel this way, but I think one of the biggest ones was just revealed in an article by the publication Vulture. You may remember a while back, I made a video saying why I think Lil Pump's persona is fake and was used just purely to market himself within meme culture. The one reason I believe that he fakes his personality is for one simple reason. The only reason. That cash cash money baby! Due to his over the top, stereotypical portrayal of a mindless young rapper, he has managed to become a viral sensation. And this article acts as the final piece of evidence needed to definitively say this is the case. In the article, it was revealed that record label owners Rojas and Alex Gelbard, I probably butchered that name, created a 10-step plan to help build Lil Pump into the viral sensation he is today through specific tactics such as memeing the artist, world star promotions, and creating controversy projects, which we can assume would be things like fake beef. This was actually so successful for him that they now call it the Pump Plan. Now, I have a feeling most of us could tell that Lil Pump was at least exaggerating aspects of his character to draw people in, but maybe I'm stupid for not knowing this, but I didn't picture it being this manufactured, you know, being created with the help of a label who might essentially be telling him what to do. I just figured it was a little more organic and maybe Pump just having fun with it. At this point, you have to ask, how much creative control does Lil Pump have over how he portrays himself? And is this loss of control something that is causing him to hint towards his possible negative thoughts? And that actually brings me full circle right back to the exact comparison I made in the Is Lil Pump's Personality Fake video, one that applies in this mental health discussion, and that is the comparison to George Miller, aka Filthy Frank. A parallel which I'm using specifically because it's interesting to compare this to something outside of hip hop, and I know a lot of my audience was familiar with Frank's content. So how does this all connect together? Well, Filthy Frank was someone who, outside of his persona, is a completely regular person 
person, but he plays a very different character on camera. And this comparison is all we need to see why portraying someone who is pretty different to who you actually are can be very mentally taxing on a person. You may recall that one of the reasons George wanted to stop the Filthy Frank character was because of the insane amount of stress it was causing him, to the point where it actually triggered stress-induced seizures. So, Eventually, George Miller would stop playing that character and transition into being Joji, something that is going extremely well for him. Now take that information and apply it to Pump Situation, where he has a label behind him most likely telling him to keep playing this dumb, ignorant character that's telling him not to stop, otherwise his success might slow down. And it's not hard to imagine that this could very much be causing a lot of issues for him. Like I said, it's that loss of control over yourself. While George had millions of fans that didn't want him to change up, he still had the independence to be able to go where he wanted to creatively, even if he was taking a risk doing so. I'm completely hypothesizing here, but I'm assuming that Lil Pump doesn't have nearly the level of freedom he needs to be able to do that, with his label wanting to keep him as marketable as possible. But the interesting thing is, this doesn't really only apply to Lil Pump if you think about it. This can actually apply to the bigger picture of hip hop as well. Now, I want you to think about the fact that this is not a conversation that only relates to Lil Pump. We're pretty much talking about every single young rapper out there who's currently coming up in the rap industry. Being in a position where you go from unknown to a worldwide superstar in just a year does, in my opinion, not only create a lot of stress, but it also creates a lot of confusion for these artists. You gotta realize that a lot of these young rappers who make music and actually make it in the industry started because they had fun with rapping and they did it for the love of it. But once you become an artist who is now in the spotlight and you have all this pressure and all these expectations not only from the fans, but from the label who's literally controlling you and making you push this fake narrative of yourself just to be a little bit more marketable, what kind of human being is that gonna create in the long term? Now, do you remember in the Cloud Cobain music video by Denzel Curry how a major part of the concept was the ringmaster controlling the clown, aka Denzel Curry, adjusting him and making him entertain the crowd, and then the ringmaster, of course, was a symbol for the label who has no sympathy for the artist to the point of them sucking money out of them even though they know that they're hurting inside. This could be applied to what we're talking about here. Is Lil Pump being used as nothing but a product for the simple fact of being a means to an end by the labels? Is that maybe why he's putting up Instagram stories like this and shortly after deleting them? I feel like this is gonna be something that keeps on continuing. With the success of people like 6 ix 9 Lil Pump, and Trippy Red, it seems like the character behind these artists is exactly what's fueling their rise to the top. So a rapper who's been coming up and making a name for himself in the year of 2018 is Icy Narco. And if you look at this guy, he looks nothing but a copy of Lil Pump. In fact, his music sounds like a mix of both X and Lil Pump. And all this is nothing but proof that the system is working, aka it's making money. At the end of the day, the system that's behind all these upcoming artists is gonna continue and continue because clearly the results show that it's working. And then time after time, we're gonna get to a point where Lil Pump being unhappy is an actual conversation that's being had. So in conclusion, this is likely an industry-wide issue that is probably just going to become worse and worse because of how easy it is to make instant rap superstars to a manufactured personality nowadays. I want to close this out by saying this. If you see Lil Pump or any other rapper make posts on social media that hint towards them feeling depressed, we should show our support to them and not just point and laugh because of the persona that they have and are most likely encouraged to keep having by labels. Because at the end of the day, behind all the shouting of a popular catchphrase, behind all the jewelry, behind all the colourful hair and extravagant music videos, there is a young human being under there that just might not have it as easy as you think they do. Well guys, that is going to be it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching this and I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think about the situation down in the comments below. And of course, massive thanks to Blackie Speaks for helping me out with this video. You know, this is the fourth collaboration we've made together now. So the link to his channel will be in the description below. You know, if you've never been on his channel before, he posts like some of the most interesting hip hop discussion videos I've seen. He basically makes you think about discussions that you didn't even know you wanted to see talked about if that makes sense and that's all i got to say for today guys thank you so much for watching i will hopefully see you guys all in the next one and this is cdtv productions signing out